and welcome to Tina's Joyful Kitchen. I'm Tina McDermott, the lazy inspirational chef. And on today's show, it's all about the picnics. It's all about the picnics. We're going to make these wonderful chicken poppers with a barbecue sauce, a homemade barbecue sauce. And we're going to do a cookout remix potato salad, potato salad that is safe to bring to our picnics and not mayonnaise based. Okay, it's not a mayonnaise based. All right, let's get started. We're gonna get started with the potato salad because we need to boil up some potatoes. We need to boil up some potatoes. I love the baby potatoes. I love the flavor of them. I love the texture of them. I love the look of them. Look how pretty they are. Yes, I think food is pretty. I'm a little nutso that way, but we're still gonna cut them up. Now I boil, I'm boiling some water. It's actually at a rapid boil right now. Once it's at a rapid boil, then you wanna add some sea salt to it, okay? You wanna add some sea salt because the salt from the water is going to help flavor the potatoes. And that's, yeah, you wanna flavor the potatoes and that salt water is what's going to do that. I'm gonna cube up my potatoes. I'm gonna cube them up. And you can either do it on the cutting board like I did there, or you can do it in your hand like so. I have been taught how to cut since I was a little girl. So cutting towards me is like nothing to me, but if this is new to you, go back to the cutting board with your knife, hold your knife in a grip, index finger, thumb, three fingers around the handle, and slice your potatoes. Now, there's something I'm noticing, and I'm gonna share this with you. These are small potatoes, and this is a huge knife. And I'm thinking, hmm, I need a smaller knife for this. So I'm gonna grab one of my other knives that's a little smaller, that I'm gonna be able to handle just a little bit better for these smaller potatoes. See how that's smaller, how much smaller that is than that one? And like, this just makes more sense for these smaller pieces. So I'm going to use the smaller knife to cut the rest of them. And we're gonna boil them for, until they're fork tender, it might be 20 minutes. And some of them are really small, so you can just cut them in half. Depends on what size you want your potato salad pieces to be. And I'm not fun, I'm not fussy with it. I don't, I'm not fussy with pe if pieces are the same size or different sizes, but I don't wanna have to cut these afterwards. Don't wanna have to cut them afterwards. And yeah, some people cut them all up and then throw them into the boiling water. Me, I just cut and go, cut and go, cut and go. Cut and go is just easier for me that way. Just easier for me that way. Okay, so here we have it. That one's a tiny one, so we'll just put that right in there and you're just going to keep doing this until you get all of your potatoes in there and then cook them until they're fork tender have a little patience how do you eat an how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time how do you get all your potatoes in the pot one potato at a time my sister always says it's very cathartic to, to cut vegetables and meditative, right? Meditative, just think about your day. But if you have a knife in your hand, you're not looking at anybody. You're not talking to anybody. Well, I am, but constantly looking at my fingers because I wanna make sure that my fingers are away from the blade at all times. Be very conscientious, okay? Be very conscientious if you have a blade, when you have a blade in your hand be present. I guess that's what I'm getting at here. Be present with you and the blade in your hand. Okay. Now I've already boiled these potatoes. Magic. And now we're going to make a sauce for them. Let me just get those in. So there we have it. Easy peasy. Just remember, boil the water, then put the salt in and then let them just kind of sit and boil for about 20 minutes until they're fork tender. Okay. Next, we're going to, here's the potatoes, magic, uh, already cooked, and now we're going to make the sauce for the potatoes. I'm going to make the sauce in a separate bowl. I'm lazy, and I normally put it all together, but I don't want to break the potatoes up too much, so I'm going to put them in a different bowl, and I want to make sure that I've got all the ingredients correct here. we got the potatoes. We've got a thinly sliced red onion somewhere in our lives. Here it is, thinly sliced red onion. I knew I had it somewhere. And we're gonna put that, actually, that's not for the sauce. We're gonna put that right on top of the potatoes, right on top of our potatoes. We've got bacon. This is not for the sauce again, but I've already cooked up the bacon and it's nitrite, nitrate free. 
uncured bacon that I already cooked in the oven. I think bacon should be a food group. I love bacon. Uh, yeah. All right. So we're going to put the bacon right in there. It's already chopped up. Actually, that probably needs a little more chopping, but it'll get broken up as I go through. I'm not going to worry about it. And next we're going to do some fresh chopped parsley. And here we go. When I buy my parsley, I always put it in a little glass with water at the bottom and it stays fresher longer on your countertop and even better in your refrigerator. This was a little higher when I put them in this morning, so I think that my parsley drank some of my water. So we're gonna get a bunch of this parsley that I did wash, I washed that ahead of time, and let's just put that aside, and we're gonna chop up our parsley. Let me get the larger knife. Let me show you how to chop up some herbs here. Let me show you how to chop up some herbs. Grab the stems, and I'm just gonna shave the parsley off the stems. There we go. If there's a couple of leaves that get left behind, don't worry about it. It's a, there's a couple of stems in there, don't worry about it. The stems can be a little bitter, so you don't want a ton of stems. So now you're gonna just wrap them up like it's a big cigar. Wrap them up like a cigar. It's okay if it's messy. And then you're gonna chop once. Any kind of herbs, you're gonna chop once chop once, maybe twice, but the idea when you're chopping herbs, you don't want the green on your cutting board. You don't want stuff left over on your cutting board. Do you want to do it twice? There you go. That's enough. That's enough. This doesn't go into the dressing. This can go right on top of the potatoes. And what else? I've got some chives. Here's some beautiful chives. If you can't find them fresh, it's okay to do the dried ones. Once again, with the chives, I'm gonna chop them all up once. Remember, chop them once. And it gives a delicious flavor. That piece we're gonna give back to Mother Earth, okay? Here we go. It's really easy to grow chives as well if you have a little herb garden. And again, you don't have to chop everything the exact size. Okay, now we're gonna do the sauce. Olive oil, some really good extra virgin olive oil. Don't ever buy light olive oil because it's light in flavor, not calories, if you're thinking it's light in calories. Uh, red wine vinegar adds a pop of flavor, the red wine vinegar. If you don't have red wine vinegar, use whatever vinegar you have, but the red wine vinegar really, mm, I get salivating when I think about red wine vinegar or any kind of vinegar. By the way, I forgot, these are some chopped up scallions. I'm gonna throw those right into the potato salad. We're going to do Dijon mustard. Here we go. Let's put that right in there, some Dijon mustard. A little bit of sea salt, maybe a half a teaspoon of sea salt. We use sea salt because sea salt is full of minerals that our body needs. Okay, there we go. And some freshly ground black pepper. I like freshly ground black pepper because it it's fresh and the flavor profile of freshly ground black pepper is so much better than regular pepper that's already been ground. So pepper to taste as much as you like. I like pepper, so I'm just gonna keep going. I'll just keep going. No more pepper. Okay, that's enough. Here's some parsley. There we go. We're just gonna whip this up. Because there's the mustard in there, um, as a matter of fact, I like mustard and I don't think that that's enough mustard. I think I want a little bit more mustard. Put as much as you want, as little as you want, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna whip it up in a separate bowl. I'm a little lazy, sometimes I'll just pour it all on there and mix it in, but I really wanna emulsify it with my little whisk and not just pour it onto the potatoes, okay? Until it's all whipped up separate. Look how beautiful that is. Okay, let's put that aside. Let's get this, here's our potatoes, everything, we just add it all to the bowl here. And let's get our dressing in there. This is so, it's different than most people's potato salads that are full of, and I'm not against mayonnaise, but you just don't want mayonnaise in the heat. You don't want mayonnaise in the heat. And with those red onions, oh, the flavor is just gonna pop in here. My bacon wasn't exactly chopped like it was supposed to have been chopped, but that's okay. It's all good, there are big pieces in there. We're just gonna bite into big pieces of potato. And, I mean potato and big pieces of bacon. But you wanna chop your bacon before you threw it in. I thought it was chopped already, my bad, my bad. But that's okay, 
I got a big piece of bacon, someone's gonna get a surprise. Ooh, I got a big piece of bacon. I'm just gonna cut it up with my four, with my, my, my spoons. And there we have it. I'm gonna serve this in a little white bowl for you in just a few moments, but there we have it. Our wonderful cookout remix potato salad that is delicious and really good for you. Now, we've got these potatoes boiling over here. Let's just check them. They're not done yet, but almost, almost. Doesn't take long for them to boil, especially when, to cook, I meant, because I cut them into smaller pieces. All right. I'll present this again at the end, but have that. All right, you ready? We're going to make our chicken poppers. We're ready to make some chicken poppers. I got my cast iron skillet ready, and I'm going to put a little coconut oil in my cast iron skillet. And I know I have coconut oil here someplace. Here we go. I've got some wonderful butter flavored coconut oil. That coconut oil, I like it because you can go high heat with coconut oil, okay? And when you're frying something, you want an oil that you can go higher heat with. My parents always, or my mom and grandma, they always fried with um, olive oil. And olive oil is an unstable oil. It can only go to a medium heat. You can't go high heat with it. But coconut oil, you can go to a high heat. So I'm not gonna turn that on just yet. Let's talk about um, the chicken, okay? I have some wonderful chicken breasts that I made little chunks out of, like one inch chunks, because they're poppers. You wanna throw them into your mouth, right? You wanna throw them into your mouth. And now we're going to dredge them. So I need two separate bowls. One bowl, I'm going to put some tapioca flour, or you can use arrowroot starch, either or, okay? I don't do gluten, because gluten really messes my stomach up and messes a lot of people's stomach up and a lot of bread crumbs that are out there that you might do this and with it uh, has a lot of msg we talk we i talk about this all the time and um bad oils and all that other fun stuff so we're going to do arrowroot and what else goes with that it's arrowroot and i think just salt and pepper right yep here we go so i've got this sea salt it's black, black lava sea salt from Hawaii, okay? So I'm gonna put some sea salt in with that, as well as pepper. I think I'm gonna do pepper in there too. Smoked sea salt and a little bit of freshly ground black pepper. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Coconut oil, where are, where'd you go? So we've got our coconut oil in one bowl. Do a couple tablespoons of coconut oil. What I did is I put this whole jar in a pot of boiling water to melt the coconut oil. And it kind of solidified a little bit, just a little bit, but it's fine. It's enough because I want it to get the chicken a little more wet with the coconut oil. But I also have coconut oil in here. So I'm gonna turn my cast iron skillet on. I love my cast iron skillet because uh, you get iron from the cast iron. Also, it cooks beautifully. It cooks evenly. Oops, sorry, had a little fit with me. Okay, you ready? Get your tools ready, your hands, those beautiful hands, and let's get dipping. We're gonna dip a little bit in the coconut oil, and then we're gonna dredge it in the arrowroot slash sea salt, black lava sea salt, and arrowroot, and then put it right into the fryer, okay? Need a pair of tongs, please. There you go. So you're just gonna keep dipping, dredging, and putting right in there. Dipping, dredging, and putting right into the fryer. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. There we go. I have wonderful assistants. Love them, love them, love them. And these are wonderful because it's summertime and we wanna be outside. I talk about this a lot. 
and we want fast foods. This doesn't take that long to make. You cut up the chicken, you throw it in the, in the coconut oil, you throw it into, look how easy it was for me to make these breadcrumbs, right? And it's really easy. And fry it up, you're gonna fry it up a couple of minutes on each side. And then we're gonna make a homemade barbecue sauce. We're gonna make this wonderful homemade barbecue sauce. Why? I, I can tell you, I have gone through or read so many labels of barbecue sauces and every single time I read a, a label of a barbecue sauce it has sugar in it or it has MSG in it or it has bad oils in it like some canola oil or soy oil or something that I do not want in my body and, and you don't want in yours either right because a lot of those things really mess with your brain sometimes even during the show you might see me like I can't find a word and it's probably because I had something that I wasn't supposed to be eating and the Lyme disease affected my brain. But, you know, I'm not gonna use that as an excuse. I'm just gonna say, try really hard to eat foods that are homemade, healthier for you, so that you don't have these kind of issues, especially for the children and our elderly, right? Especially for the children and the elderly, okay? Super easy, super easy to do all of this, and again, now I'm putting them in at different times, that means I'm going to be flipping them at different times as well, right? I'm gonna be flipping them at different times. Almost out of coconut oil, but I can fix that. Here we go. There we go, fix it. Got more coconut oil now. Even though it's a little hard, it's fine. It still works. And look, you could even have done it this way, the way I'm doing it now. The easier, do it all at once. A little messy. That's okay. Have some fun. Get a little messy in the kitchen. These are almost ready to be turned over. And give me a second, and I will turn them over. One more piece, one more, one more, one more. There we go. I'm gonna go wash my hands, I'll be right back, and then we're gonna flip them, it's about time. can smell it you can hear it and you know it's sizzling a little bit and you know it's probably about time to start turning some of them okay and you know it's time to turn them again when you start to hear that sound and then you start to see it cook a little bit on the bottom like this piece here you can see I'm gonna flip it around it's got a little browning going on on it okay and if you flip a piece that you probably put in later, don't worry about it, just flip it back because you really only, only wanna flip this once, okay? Like I said, I'm lazy. I was chopping, dipping, putting them in all at different times, so it just makes it a little more challenging to know, all right, which one do I flip next? Which one do I flip next? But you kinda of gotta get an eye for it and you'll see, like that one I know is ready. That one I know is ready. That one I know I put in a little later. Okay, and if you're ever like, I don't know what the temperature is and I need to know that you get your instant read thermometer and you use your instant read thermometer, which I know I have someplace in my life. There it is, I see it. And we'll check it with the instant read thermometer. Now the other thing that you wanna do for this is you got a little fat going on here. So you're gonna get a plate Put a couple paper towels on your plate, and as they come out, you're just gonna plate them on here, okay?
And if you're not sure if it's done, again, you get your instrument thermometer and you put it in, don't touch the pan. And if it's not at 165, you keep cooking it because chicken needs to be cooked it to 165 degrees, okay? Yeah, that one's done. That one's done and you see, see how it's nice and crispy brown on each side? That's what you want, nice and crispy brown on each side. And you might want to check every single one with the instant meat thermometer, you might not. But I like putting it on the paper towels because it absorbs some, if you're gonna fry, you want the paper towels to absorb some of that grease, okay? All right, I know that one is done. I can tell that one is done. And if the meat feels a little jiggly, it's not done. Okay. Our chicken is ready. It came off, and again, paper towel, get rid of the extra grease. And yes, I did. I checked every single piece with an instant read thermometer to make sure that it was at least 165 because you don't want to get sick. You don't want to get your family sick, okay? So check them. And when they're nice and crispy, you know that they're done when they're nice and crispy. Okay, so the chicken is done, but now we need to make some really good barbecue sauce because we want barbecue sauce again that's good for our bodies, our brains, and everything. So we're going to start with a pot on top of um, a pot. And we're gonna do about two tablespoons of some butter or, of course, butter flavored coconut oil. Butter flavored coconut oil, throw that right in there. And, oh, there's just like a little dollop left. Might as well just put it in. You know I don't measure. Lazy, lazy, inspirational chef. We're gonna do some canned tomatoes. These are crushed tomatoes. They're fryer roasted. I love fire roasted. I love that extra flavor of what fire roasted. And these are, these are organic. If you're gonna do canned foods, just make sure that they're BPA free. That's that plastic that, that goes on the inside to separate the can from the food. So just, again, oh, I always wanna remind you of that. Some tomato paste. It's kind of like making ketchup, but it's a little different. There's some different components to it. Okay, let me lower this temperature a little bit. Okay, just a few different components to it. And you can have barbecue sauce your way. You could have it regular, you could have it tangy, you could have it sweet, you could have it spicy. What do you like? What do you like? So the main things are the tomatoes, the tomato paste, apple cider vinegar. We're gonna put in some apple cider vinegar. I put a half a cup. If you want it tangier, you put a whole cup of apple cider vinegar. Whoa, do not spill. I spilled it anyway. <gasps> That's all right. Blackstrap molasses, full of minerals that are so good for you and belongs in barbecue sauce. Blackstrap molasses. I absolutely recommend that you ooh, put it on top of sweet potatoes. Oh, delicious, absolutely delicious. Coconut aminos, that's what I spilled a little bit of. Coconut aminos are kind of like soy sauce, but without the soy. It's literally from soy and you get that umame flavor. Umame is, is just that unusual flavor that you get from things like sardines and capers and the such. Okay, so we're going to put the amino acids in there. Amino, yeah, coconut aminos, I meant to say, not amino acids. And then we're going to do some freshly, you can do coconut, you can do garlic powder if you want, but I am going to do fresh, fresh garlic that I'm just going to press in my garlic press. Here we go. It's so easy to make barbecue sauce. It's so easy. I implore you to make it. It'll stay pretty good in your refrigerator for about 10 days. And people think ketchup lasts in your refrigerator for a long time, but it doesn't. There's still some kind of mold that does accumulate in it. So if you have ketchup, mustard, any kind of condiments that you think, oh, it's gonna last forever, try three, three months or less. Try three months or less. We're gonna do some black pepper. If you want it spicier, double the amount of black pepper. We're gonna do some chili powder. Again, if you want it spicier, put more chili powder in there. Uh, onion powder, and you can do garlic powder, but the fresh garlic, as I always tell you, fresh garlic is immune boosting. So add the fresh garlic in there as well. Add the fresh garlic. Let's make sure that I've got everything that I want in here. Salt, and I'm missing a little bit of salt. If you want this sweeter, you can add some honey to it. 
Add some honey if you want it sweeter, maybe a half a cup of honey, a third of a cup of honey, put a little bit of honey. If I had honey, I would probably squeeze a little honey in here because I like honey. But I also, it's sugar, and sugar is really challenging for the brain. It's challenging for, um, it can elevate your blood sugar levels. But hey, you know, if you want a little bit of sugar in your barbecue sauce, you put a little bit of honey in there. So we're just gonna stir this up. I'm gonna simmer it around and cook it for maybe less than 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. And look how beautiful it is already. Already it is gorgeous. And oops, I can't lift that off of here before it starts screaming at me. So we're just gonna cook that up for five minutes and I'll be right back and I'm going to serve up some chicken poppers and barbecue sauce. All right, to conclude our show, here we have it. We have our potato salad. That's our cookout remix potato salad. No mayonnaise and look how beautiful that looks. You can even top that with additional chives. And we have our chicken poppers with our homemade barbecue sauce. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to pop these in my mouth. And I hope that you all have wonderful time this summer at your family and friends picnics doing outdoor fun things together. Thank you so much and until next time. Namaste. Bye for now everyone.